so-called firefighter safer grant. Um, I didn't call it that. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. I wouldn't call it that either. But <laughs> yeah. no, that's the federal government that called it that. That's uh, it's the FEMA um, Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Grant. So it's actually an acronym? It is. So it should be all capital, I'd say. Typically it is. <laughs> okay, uh, we raised some issues over this, I okay. believe. The primary one, at least in my mind, was we've been asking whether you need more firefighters for some time, and we've never gotten a, an affirmative to that. Um, and so suddenly we have an affirmative, apparently, because of this warrant out of existence. You need four more firefighters, is that what I'm hearing? And what I've been pressuring for for some time now was that we uh, apply the appropriate funding to get nine firefighters per day minimum, okay? And I know that we've talked about that in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the intention to use the federal government's funding right now would be to get the tenth person. As we've talked about in the past too, I know that you have heard me speak at length about how we run down. And if you'd like, I'll explain it again, but at the end of the day, each group, four groups, they start at nine. There's a captain, a lieutenant, seven firefighters. And then if there's a vacancy, we do not staff a firefighter position, so we run to eight. Good there. On a staffing to 10 situation, if we use the federal government to assist us in that position, we would still potentially run down to nine, which would give us that ninth man. We'd always run at nine. I can show you the benefit by telling you that our captains have been alone at some time when there's no callback. Um, and during that time frame, they're not able to perform calls as necessary. But when we have staffed at nine, which we did this summer, we did from June 15th through, we made it all the way through to almost um, Veterans Day. Um, the, the amount of time that the captain spent unable to respond was significantly reduced almost to a third because we actually had in-house firefighters who were able to perform the tests necessary to do it. Has there, any, has there been any issues over the last few years relative to not being able to put out a fire because of the present manpower? On the fire side, I would say, you know, without a further explanation, I certainly don't want to give you an off-the-cuff answer. Um, generally speaking, we do a tremendous job of, of responding to fires and also getting mutual aid mm -hmm. immediately. Uh, one area that I, and we're all aware that the ambulance call volume for us has far exceeded expectations even when this went into an existence um, some 20 years before I got here. Uh, to that end, we're seeing much more mutual aid responses in town from from ambulances as well. So it's not just the fire side. The ambulance portion of our business is responsible for about 85 to 90 percent of our call volume. Mm -hmm. And on that side, we see more frequently the the use of mutual aid coming in. During the fire side, we have two fire engines in town that are staffed typically. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's evidence that it's not always staffed when the captains are alone because the second set of uh, crew has gone on second ambulance and callback hasn't arrived. But we have two engines that will respond, and then the ambulance company staffs the ladder truck. So we have definitely not had a full complement going to fires in our community for sure, mm -hmm. and we've relied on mutual aid to that end. Because on, on the face of it, from my point of view, the fire department in Hampton is a great fire department. I concur. And, uh, you know, it's hard to do better than great. Well, and so... It strikes me as why, why do we need additional resources if we're already here? Earlier this evening, Mr. Bashan was here and he was discussing the master plan. Yeah. And you brought up 1985 is when the master plan occurred, right? right? Um, and I think, and Mr. Barnes, you had mentioned that the, this city, town, has changed significantly since 1985. Staffing in the fire department remains the same. In 1985, there were nine on duty. One was dedicated to fire alarm or dispatch, eight firefighters. Currently, if we run down to eight, I have one civilian dispatcher who's working as a fire alarm operator, but I still have eight firefighters. We haven't changed. This town has grown immensely. We've seen 1.4 million well, square to, feet of real estate. To be fair, the town yep. has changed. I mean, of course. The, the fire alarm situation itself has been radically different from what it was in 1985. Certainly. The existence of uh, automatic sprinkler systems and buildings, True. Uh, which was virtually non-existent in 1985, is now there. Yep. Uh, there are a variety of things that make your job um, um, less of a challenge than they would have been in 1985. And to qualify that, I understand exactly what you're saying, and we're very um, diligent about code enforcement. Uh, by the same token, in 1985, if you remember, just, just think back to what you used to sit on if you went to visit your grandmother's house. It was wool and cotton batting on a wooden chair. The heat release rates weren't what they are today. 
in your at home if you have a lazy boy furniture you know you're in your recliner the heat release rates are so great fires are burning so much hotter and so much faster that the importance of getting there immediately and extinguishing that fire is greatly increased because at the end of the day the time to flash over which is when that room the entire room flashes over to fire has significantly reduced and there are videos online I can demonstrate for you if you'd like but the the legacy furniture that I was just talking about similar to this hardwood gave firefighters up to 29 minutes to respond put up fire single room fire now it's less than three by the time we get there after the fire alarm is called to us 60 seconds to get ready four minutes to drive there we're arriving at time of flashover so the entire room is is expecting now to flash over to fire point we need to apply water as quickly as possible to do that we need the appropriate manpower may i ask a question so we had lazy boys in 1985 too and, polyfill uh, yeah. polyfill have you ever seen the inside well I or, that. if you I have a dog and you've seen isn't, what they do to the yeah. animal isn't there some sort of like they do with cigarettes you have fire safe cigarettes now right thanks sure to the, but thanks the, to the, the firefighters yeah. union fighting for fire safe cigarettes and now you have fire safe furniture as well well right? the, the furniture the is now embedded or built with not all not all but not much all. of it is uh some may be mm -hmm. especially if you're a california standard Mm -hmm. Not all furniture is relegated to that standard. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, the, the polyfill that you're seeing inside of these Lazy Boys, the foam, it's, it's extended, extruded, we call it frozen plastic because it's a petroleum product. That is releasing gases and it's releasing fuel. So that smoke has become a fuel that is so pervasive and it flows throughout the building. If you watch any YouTube videos, if you take five minutes and watch it or watch any evening news, you'll see that fire is just, it's black smoke. We call that black fire. As soon as it reaches its ignition temperature and there's enough oxygen, the whole building will light up. That's what we're afraid of when we get there. And that's because of the contents and the fuel that's, that's um, being ignited nowadays. Well, as long as we're done trashing Lazy Boy, maybe you could suggest to the... I love uh, Lazy Boy. Maybe you could suggest to the citizens a different brand. I don't know. About <laughs> that. Are there any other... Mr. Moore. I'm very interested because i got a whole family room full of Lazy Boy. <laughs> I'm sure they'll thank you right years now. Ago. Certainly. My question is seriously, um, along with that, watching the news over the years, I thought, and I'm going to use the word thought, sure. that there were so many fires with couches and things of that nature that there were codes put into towns or the furniture company changed and made furniture less prone to fire and more fire resistant. Is that true? Not universal. Help me with that, please. No, not universal. A lot of things, and you'll hear, uh, you, you're do not remove tag in case of penalty of law, right? So right. you take off that tag first thing you do when you get home. Well, that tag will often say that it's built to the California standard. A lot of times California is very progressive in some of their standards, and they have some sort of fire prevention quality. But there are some furniture companies that will do that, and they'll apply a, a spray on the material to make them fire retardant. We're also finding now, we've discussed this at length before about um, carcinogens for the firefighters. When those chemicals that are sprayed on the furniture burn, they're actually releasing so much in the way of carcinogens that it's actually even worse for the exposure for the firefighters. And they're getting it transdermally, getting it through their skin. So it, it's a terrible thing in some respects. What about mattresses? Same. Beds. Beds yep, beds. same. And now if you look and, and you see some of the Tempur-Pedics and the, their polyurethane foams, um, and again, not the, we, we could say Bobopedic, okay, Mr. Jones, it doesn't have to be the same name brand. But at the end of the day, that, that polyurethane foam burns with rapidity. So they, they give off toxic fumes, and that, those, that smoke, aerosol and gases, are fuel. And once they get to the right temperature, combined with oxygen, that's all fuel now. So the entire structure will be filled with that, which 30 years ago, 35 years ago, wasn't the case. The wool and the cotton that was burning was not the case. It's almost like if you go back 40 years, 50 years, people had aluminum siding. Sure. And then eventually you don't want aluminum siding because it kept in the heat and the house would go up quicker. So now plastic siding melts. Correct. So it doesn't burn as quickly to the house and gives you a better chance for the fire department to help you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Yeah. Mr. Matt. If I understood you, Chief, you said about 90% of your work now is EMS? A tremendous amount of our workload is definitely EMS, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. And as you know, we're also responding with the fire engine on, yeah. on severe EMS calls, mm -hmm. right? And there are m more occasions now when you have to call for mutual aid for EMS than there were 10 or 15 years ago? Yes. Yeah. And what's the approximate time for a, an out-of-town ambulance to get to the location of the need versus your ambulance? Well, it depends on the location in town. 
So uh, generally speaking, if we're dealing with the west side of town, the, the fire alarm operator may select uh, Exeter Ambulance. Mm -hmm. Northampton is our most frequent, <coughs> Seabrook. So we're, we're certainly looking at that. It's time travel from their fire um, station. Mm -hmm. However, as represented, in, and it happens too, where we had a, a box alarm this week, or a transmitted box, uh, smoke in the building. Galley Hatch had a, a small situation, and there was another one down on Epping Ave. In doing so, when it was the Epping Ave call, I believe, where everybody went to, to work as fire suppression to Epping Ave, and in the meantime, two ambulance calls came in. One was a Northampton ambulance, and one was a Seabrook ambulance. Both transported to the hospital. Our fire units were still on scene. Both ambulances from our surrounding communities transported to the hospitals. When we went back in service and came back to the fire station, <coughs> Northampton had a call. So our companies had to go to Northampton and transport. Is it reasonable to say that if someone needs an ambulance, the service is more likely to more, be more quickly provided if we do it in town versus calling for mutual aid? I would say that is absolutely reasonable to say, yes, sir. And is it fair to say also the beach alone has had like $250 million worth of development in the last decade, and the rest of the town has had significant, significant. development? So it would seem to me this is really, do we want to spend the money to protect our, our health primarily? Everyone agrees you have a marvelous EMS group. I agree. And the technology of those ambulances is incredible. You're, you're almost like a drive-in mini hospital. I or emergency completely room. agree. And the technology that we're bringing to the patient is, is bar not. I mean, it's, it's the highest it's ever been right now. And we continue, with your assistance and with the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager's assistance, we continue to explore that and then keep exceeding the bar. We keep raising the bar and then exceeding it because we're buying the new equipment that's going to bring the best possible care to the patient. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Walbert. Chief Ayotte. Yes, sir. Back in April when you came here, do you remember what I said or April? asked you then when we talked about, or April or May, when we talked about the priorities of the fire department and what was certainly myself, what was my big thing that we talked about at that time? You're going to have to refresh my memory, sir. Turnout gear. Sure. Okay. I also said that that's going to be a big expense, right? And right. so when we prioritize things, and that's why I'm so proud to see that I think we're going to get a lot of support for that, because that's a, necess a much needed part of the job. To my friend Bob Vlad's point, Bob, it doesn't matter if you have four more firefighters, you still need a certain amount of ambulances, so that really is, doesn't correlate. It there does. has been it well, does. Well, well it does, but hold well, on. Well, well, if you're going to bring that point up, let me say okay. that currently on a fire engine, we respond with three. I am. Okay. On an ambulance, they respond with two. If the first ambulance transports or goes out, that second ambulance takes the two firefighters from the engine. Mm -hmm. So if I have a staffed up appropriate staffing level, the second ambulance can be taken out without stripping the engine for personnel. Mm -hmm. It takes personnel, not just ambulances, to do the job. So several of your men are very close friends of mine. Not okay. once have they said to me, boy, I feel this town's been in danger. Well, of course not. Well, no, but that's, a, that's an important point, though. Right. The other thing we asked, or I asked, and to the chairman's point, which was very eloquent, and the great chairman he's done this year back, your comment about do we need this. I, I asked so that the voters know the real cost. Why didn't we have a warrant article? Put it right out there. We want four or five fighters. The heck with these grants. We see what happens with grants. Okay, then you incorporate them, and three years from now, who knows? If the voters really want and we need four new firefighters, I think the justification has to be more than just what we talked about, and you've referenced a lot tonight, mutual aid. It goes both ways. We help towns. What's wrong with they didn't help us? If I asked anybody at this table at 1999 at the fire of the old Saul, you know who took care of a lot of that fire? Stratum and the call firefighters. So you got I think we've got to be careful that then there's nobody more. I mean, half my family's firefighters, teachers, and police. So I'm going to put that right out there right now. There's nobody more supportive. But I've got to be careful too when I'm representing the taxpayers that we can't just throw stuff out there every year. And I applaud you for fighting for your department. I, I like that in a person, and good for you. But we 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 said this before. And to talk all of a sudden now with saying, okay, we're going to try to get a safer grant. I don't know what's going to happen with the Federal Homeland Security. Who knows the way this country is going right now. But my point is, you admitted tonight, most of your thing, let's say 80%, my, 
is ambulance, right? I'm not admitting anything. Okay. I'm telling you facts. Right. No, no. All right. No, yeah. I'm saying that I used 80 percent. You did. Sure. <clears throat> Very few fires in the last 15 years, and the two fires two have been reduced. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You have currently 40 firefighters, correct? No. 39. I have 36. That includes my officers. So there are 28 okay, firefighters. Right. There are eight officers. You have four okay. captains. Correct. And four lieutenants. Correct. Okay. So. And you've also came to the board, which they have a right to do on a bottom line budget, when you needed that overtime money, right? In the summertime, mm -hmm. you came, and I appreciate it. I watch all the meetings. That worked out well, too, right? It certainly did. So we're back at, at square one. And I guess, going back to your point, way back with a totally different subject with the planning, the master plan, but somewhat related, we have got to be awful sure that asking the public for four additional firefighters at this day and age, when we've actually had a pretty darn good track record of the great fire department we have now, and your point is well taken. I don't know how you go from great any more than great. We said it about our police department. We said it about our public works. We said it about town hall, our rec department, on and on. But I'm gonna make one more comment, and I wanna make it very clear today, and this is, doesn't matter what party you belong to, but Governor Sununu, in his inaugural today, he said it's, all, it's not always about throwing more money at something. We may, and sorry lieutenants and captains that are friends of mine, we may have to start looking at how we do fire business. We, we, it may, it's not the same. You just alluded to the master plan that Jason wants. Absolutely it's related because, we, and to somebody say the old way of thinking, We've got to start thinking outside the box. We can't keep having costs go up and up and up. How do we say to the taxpayers, okay, well, because we had 20 more runs or we had this and that, and I'm saying this, okay, because I need to feel good about supporting. I am absolutely 150% of support of the turnout gear. That's part of their job, and we need, never mind the second turnout, just the whole gear in general. But we've got to be careful when we're just putting out there, you use the word, Three times tonight, you have, tr I think you used the word, you pushed, you've tried to get these other positions. I will bring you back to 10, 12 years ago when there was a warrant article for four positions, and then there were four positions in the budget. So, I wasn't not, here 10 years ago. No, I understand that. But his, history means a lot, and I've got to feel comfortable that is it absolutely necessary? Because if you say to me, we're going to decrease overtime by 30%. You know what? I might be interested for the safety of the firefighters, and I believe it's necessary for the safety of the community, and that's my primary job. My secondary job, not less important, is a fiduciary responsibility to the to the community. So the reason that I'm asking for this safer grant is to your point, and I think you made it for me, is that we don't necessarily want to fund 100 percent for firefighters if we can avoid it, and the federal government is giving the opportunity to pay 75 percent of the freight for two years, and then 35 percent in the third year. I think that it would be irresponsible not to take the federal government up on that offer. But here's the point, and you said it again, and I'm glad we're on TV. Me too. Seventy-five percent of a hundred leaves twenty-five percent. That's true. So if we take twenty-five percent from the fire department, twenty-five from public works, twenty-five from the police, all this money that adds up to the taxpayers. That's why I go back to my original subject, and I and I said it to Selectman Barnes too, and I watched the meetings. I would have felt better whether I'm for it or not if we just right out said four fires, the heck with all this other misleading. And, and it's not misleading to the sense that, and we're going to deal with this next week with, with Frank's school. I mean, we've got a real big issue next week on a, 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 a position that was funded for a year out of grant. Now they're going to come back as a new position. So it may or may not fly. That's what I'm saying. I'm very supportive, and I appreciate your reports. I appreciate your management. But we've got to take a step back here and maybe how are we doing fire business in 2019, just as like we talked about everything else. Your point about, you know, and, and we said earlier about turnout gear, you made a great presentation on that. And we pushed you on it. We said it's got to be done, and we're doing it. And so, and we're taking the money out, and I think it's going to be a, a big vote for that. But as far as this goes, I'm not feeling the pulse. And I feel a pulse of the community. Listen, I passed a lot of contracts. I was involved, as Mr. Sullivan said earlier, we worked together years ago. I'm not feeling it. And, I, and I'm telling you, I'm not feeling it. We can't keep saying, well, you said yourself, that's the town you feel very safe. 
the top taxpayers should feel safe. You've said it when you had your deputy in here. The taxpayers should be feel safe. We've got a great department. You've got the greatest men and women. I know all of them. They are terrific. But adding more people to what is already an over, over bulge, bulging budget, and I might add, and I might add once again, and it's no deference to Mr. Welch because he's worked hard and stuff, but he said himself in two occasions in the last month, the, in the next two years, your taxes are going to see a bulge. And all I'm saying is we can't just, this is one of many articles. I've said my piece. I'm very in favor of what the fire department does. To the chairman's point, and the chairman, more than many others in this town, has done his homework through the years, and I really appreciate it, in what you folks have done and what you currently do and how much that really is going to change by adding four new people. And I, I, I just think we need to take a step back. So I, that's all I'm going to say on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chim. Anybody else? No, my, my main concern is not the first year appropriation or the second year appropriation, the third year appropriation. It's actually four, five, and six That's right. future years where we're paying the full boat. Um, I think we have a, a duty to be sensitive to not just next year, but subsequent years in terms of the effect of what we're recommending. Um, do you, uh, just a question, do you anticipate that the growth will stop? I anticipate that as the growth increases, that the uh, safer standards will be applied to them and we'll have less of a fire issue. I think the argument for four additional personnel in this department probably carries more weight from the EMT point of view. But there, you, the, you have to understand that right. all of my personnel perform those I do, functions I as do, well. I do so there, you know, on any given day, they may be firefighter on the engine or they mm -hmm. may be on the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So this would increase that as well. I, I, I acknowledge that, and I'm not saying that it's sufficiently justified. And, and I don't have... I'm I only saying the argument sounds stronger sure. to me. doesn't mean it wins the day with me. Understood. Okay. But just in a general perspective, too, and this is not a hard number. This is, this is uh, it's very difficult data to always get when you're talking about what calls came in, what were the billing, because if a mutual aid ambulance comes, it may be BLS, it may be ALS. Okay, so if it's a BLS call, then it's billed at a lesser rate. If it's an ALS call, it's billed. If we're looking at that, then if an ambulance is transporting somebody and it's at an ALS rate, we're charging about, I believe it's, and not including mileage, it's uh, $1,079 per ALS run. And we're significantly lower than many other communities. If they're charging more than that, they're creating, they're generating that revenue for themselves by transporting our patients. This is potentially a revenue loss, if you want to look at it from that perspective, by not being able to transport our own patients from the EMT side of the world. On yeah, the same time, we could, if the Board of Selectmen chose to charge more, we could well, actually have increased revenue on their decision alone. Right? And, and then there's also a balance, too, on unpaid <coughs> bills and whether or not that <coughs> needs to be written up. Yes, yes. So what, what I'm telling you right now is that is my strong recommendation to, to, to be sure that going after this safer grant would provide for the safety of the firefighters and the safety of the community and would allow us to perform a better service. Well, I'm just telling you that I would look, I would look uh, less uh, um, suspicious if the word grant wasn't here. It was just funded based on what we need. That's right. When we throw the word grant in there, it's like it's suggesting to people that it's free money, and it's really not. That's right. Especially as you go further out into the years. So it makes me more <coughs> sensitive to the argument. That's pretty much what I was saying or trying to say. Um, is there anybody else seeing none? Are we ready to vote? Well, I well, would like to ask a question, again. actually. I've gotten the information that shows the comparison over the next three years, because we don't have anything past that. The grant would be three years, and we actually had a Warren article that showed the total cost sure. if we didn't do anything for a grant. So we're going to save for the first two years 75%, correct, if the federal government accepts correct. the grant, and then what's the last year? Uh, 35 pay? 65 so they'll, they'll pay 35% of the salaries and benefits. These additional four hires, will this allow the fire department to man an engine and an ambulance, both the beach station and the fire station? So let's qualify that, yes, on a 10-person day. Right, so, but you would run down to nine. Right now if you run, run down, down to nine, then we're at where we would be right now. At on every day. Correct. If we run it full right staff, right run now we run down to eight. eight. Right? So if we run to nine, full staffing does not bring an ambulance to the beach. Ten does. Okay, so we have more down the beach. 
We have bigger buildings. We have more of them. That's my highest fire hazard, for sure. I've talked to the chief several times, not during this time of year, not during budget season, and he has concern, the development of the town, the increase to what we built, and the lack of what we invested, and not just the fire department, in my view, but in a lot of different areas of the town. We had two options here. We could have gone with the SAFER grant, which a grant obviously is going to run out. That's what they do. I think it will be very easy enough that if the firefighters were willing to do so, to explain to the public, which I would hope that, you know, if anyone is very concerned that this warrant article gets passed, that they will explain what will, you know, what will happen if it does get passed, what will happen if it doesn't get passed. It's very explicit. It says three years. Now, I received a document that actually showed the breakout and it actually should show the comparison if we just decided to do this. You come to us as if you're doing now, saying that you would feel more comfortable, it would be better for the department, it would be better for the town if we had dashed, if we um, employed an additional four people. To me, this is an option. We can either do it this way or we can just do the four. This is our fire chief telling us this. I've talked to him on several times about it. So maybe if we could get a little bit more backup information, which I think will help w with what you're saying, we're not just throwing grant in there so that it sounds good, but it's an opportunity for us to save money in the first three years. Mm -hmm. So maybe if it was sold like that, I don't like using that word sold, but <coughs> if we portray that to the voters, that would make everyone feel a little bit better. Yeah, I, I apparently gave the wrong impression when I say the word grant, I become more suspicious. I mean, I was aware of the other Warren article. And, right. of course, if I were given the choice of advancing one or the other, it would be this one that I would advance because of the existence of the grant. But still, the need for the, for the four additional personnel has not been established in my mind yet. Um, and that's where I was coming from because we sort of granted and we have talking about grant rather than the actual need right uh, and that's that's where I was coming from in that it wasn't suggesting that we shouldn't have moved this one forward actually I would think this would be the better one to move forward but I'd rather the discussion be on determining that we actually have a need for this additional personnel uh, I know once we get them it's going to be very difficult and we lose our was it Barrington that eliminated uh, four firefighters back in 2005, wasn't it? 2005, but let me remind you. Hampton did as well then. Pardon? Hampton also had layoffs at that same time. Well, oh, no, but no, the point is, is that that was a big, hot political year. It caused a lot of upset all over the place. In this community as well. Yeah, and, and, and the Hampton v. Sullivan case was born out of that, remember? Gilligan, but Which the school resource offices were started as grants. Yeah. And all I'm saying is skyrocket. Now you're looking at 340 something thousand, whatever, just, I mean, they're putting it through. I, whether you call it a grant or whether you do it, and you hit on another good point. Even if we went this route, which I'm not in favor of this route, you, you, you think anybody's going to community after three years say, oh, we're, gonna, we're not going to have those firefighters anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the point. And I think that we've got to, we, we've really got to sit back and talk about staffing. And, you know, you could, we could develop to 30,000 people. Does that mean we're going to want 20 more people? I mean, I think you got to. I think you got to be a little clearer. Not, not you. I'm saying collectively. Well, it is me because I am the fire chief All right, right now. Well, one of the uh, questions that you asked was whether or not the the population had changed. We can't tell, and let me tell you why we can't tell. Because the 2010 census said we had 14,976 people. It's 2019, and we haven't seen a new census since, since then. I, I imagine. Over Fifteen thousand right now. What's that? 15,100 15, something well, that's 2017 census. Document. Yeah, so, but the, the actual... Didn't the, grow anything. Right. But when we look at this, the, the property that we're protecting, too, has grown by 1.4 million square feet. Imagine that all of that needs to be protected. When I say that, this is, these are not all sprinkler buildings. One and two family homes don't come under that. We still fight fires in one and two family homes. They're not sprinkler. They don't have fire codes that we enforce because by state law, we don't have purview there. So we're still fighting fires in buildings that haven't been sprinkled, that haven't been rendered to the safer level of, of the code, and we don't have purview by state law. So how do we justify that? These communities are growing too, and I can point to the names of the roads, uh, not, to, not the least of which is we're looking to put in several more over on Timber Swamp. This, these communities are growing too, and it's not just the sprinkled buildings, the, the larger condos that we might see on Ashworth Ave or on Ocean Boulevard. It's across the board, 
from east to west, yeah. this community's growing. The number you cite in terms of how much um, we've grown right. in terms of property value at the beach, uh, I don't think is... So I didn't bring up value. Chief Sawyer did that in a Board of Selectmen meeting, and, I, and I'll explain it to you why... You said 1.1 million. No, that's square feet. Square so, feet. so okay. listen, at the end of the so day... So that additional square feet, I don't yes. think, was driven by one and two-family buildings. It was actually driven by the high-rises, wasn't driven it? driven by all of them. Right. All of them at... Well, what was the primary sure. driver? We should Everything. ask our former assessor. Mr. Tinker assisted yeah. me in getting the numbers, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but at the end of the day, from Boar's Head to the bridge, in, ten year, in, in uh, seven years' time, there was $260 million worth of construction. Okay, And as I stated in front of the Board of Selectmen, firefighters really don't care how much people spend on construction. Because at the end of the day, whether it's worth a lot of money or not a lot of money, we're still going to fight the fire. If somebody's trapped inside and it's a building that's not worth 50 bucks, we're still going to go get that person. If the building's $150,000, we're going to go get that person. If it's a million dollar home, I got it. we're going to get it. the right. The issue is. But the you have to understand if we're going to do that, right, on a bigger building, we need more personnel to be able to perform the job. Well, you see, that's what my concern is because, as you know, I've mentioned relative to the master plan, them ignoring the uh, maintenance of low profile buildings. And every proposal that came out <coughs> exceeding the height requirements mm -hmm. had public safety people come in, including the fire chief, assessing what kind of risk factor exceeding that height limit might pose. And the answer to from everyone was, oh, that's nothing, nothing at all. There's no, there's no risk factor here at all. I have never said it was nothing, and, and I haven't been represented on that as far as those committees go. Oh, well, no, I wasn't talking about committees. Okay. I was talking about the actual meetings at the planning boards. Uh, when the question was posed, if we put in this 70-foot building, uh, would you be able to handle that without any additional uh, expense or so forth? And the answer was, a, you know, we could handle that, a great fire department, all that stuff. And so that's, that's how things went on for project after project. And ultimately, when we raised the building zoning requirement or mm -hmm. minimum or maximum height, uh, the same question was put out. And it was like, okay, no issue. And so now what I'm hearing you say is, well, with all that growth, which I believe most of that per square, uh, square foot growth was driven by the high rises. It wasn't driven by one or two family buildings. Uh, it was driven consider by the high rises. What that is, right, but let's consider what that is, right? What, what has been replaced? Several one story structures that used to be seasonal only are now replaced with three and four story structures that are year round residences. So that changes things quite a bit. If there's no fire risk, and I'm not going to say no, let's say if there's a reduced fire risk because that building is sprinklered and it's up to fire code, right, and we can all agree that it would be reduced, there's still people living there who potentially will have medical issues that we have to go transport. Yeah. So as that continues to rise, we need people to do the job. It's well, as really, I said, that's I think really the argument sounds stronger from the ENT than the fire side but, because but I, perceive, the same people. I perceive fire risk to be drastically lower uh, than it was. Yeah. Pick a point in time, and the answer I think is the statement is still true. And I would concur that in, in the, the new building side, that we can see that's actually force. increasing yeah. all uh, the time. And part of it's been driven by the aging of our population. Absolutely. Part of it's being driven by um, uh, uh, medical technology itself. Sure, people right. live longer. Well, I mean, also like the drug use and the not and all that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, and we, that's uh, a race nobody wants to win. I keep saying that too, and unfortunately, we're we're playing it. Right. So. <laughs> Again, I don't see this as, as primarily a fire fighting <coughs> risk factor here. I see it more as an EMT thing here. But it's uh, being presented as though it were firefighters pri primarily. And so I'm just seeing it differently than what's being presented as. Uh, uh, and I understand your point, Mr. Jones, but at, at the end of the day, the personnel that are doing the job, whether it's firefighting or EMT, by adding four, by I giving one per group, I do will increase our ability to provide service. Hey, Mr. Morrow. Chief, um, end of the paragraph, this article shall be null and void if the federal funding is not approved or received. I would hope, from a personal perspective, that next year you would put it on a warrant article for the full five fighters if this doesn't pass, and then add some of the things, because what I've heard you talk about a few months back was the own pandemic. Mm -hmm. which is in New Hampshire out of control along with across the country if we're number one. And I would think that your ambulances would be a lot more, I would almost think you need an extra ambulance based upon the retirements where they just want one app. To. Simultaneous calls. Absolutely. And how many people are in an ambulance? I thought it would be, you had the driver who was an EMT and another EMT. There's also a fireman. 
No, there are two, generally speaking. Right. Um, there's a, a driver and a tech, so they'll work on the patient in the back. Right. If they're going out of town so that both of our personnel can be the same in the back working on the patient, we'll send three, which means that they'll have a driver and then two of our personnel so will work So if they had to go to C Seabrook or correct. Northampton or That's something That's correct. That then we send all of our personnel out that way so that they're able to provide that service right. so that they know who they're working with in the back, whoever it might be. I'm Additionally, if we're, if we're transporting somebody cardiac arrest, if we're transporting somebody in congestive heart failure, they may take from the engine, so they may take three to the hospital or four, and it's happened recently where we've had some very sick people, and four people transport to the hospital, which means that our engine is returning out of service because it's the captain or lieutenant driving the engine back. At the okay. same time, are the firemen totally trained in EMT work? My yes. interpretation was it sounds like they've all got the same they do. quality of skills. Well Correct. Yeah. All so qualified. our lowest level at this point for, the, for service providers is advanced EMT and paramedic, right, is the next highest level. Um, there are two or three officers that have reduced their to basic EMT, which is now just classified as EMT. But everybody else who's providing patient care is an advanced EMT or a paramedic. That's amazing. And we need to maintain that standard and move forward. Yeah. You, you all set there? No. Okay. They also need training. Continuously. Now, is there continuous training for these EMTs? Absolutely. I would think there would be, is my thoughts. As medicine progresses and changes. Yeah. So how many days a year do they generally go to refresher, if not new school? So um, for, med uh, yeah, for emergency medical certifications, their certifications are renewable every two years. So refreshers every two years, um, and we have it now. The EMS officer, Nate Denio, has done a tremendous job of cycling it. So approximately 50% of the department does it one year and 50% the next year, okay? Um, in doing so, it's approximately 40-ish hours. The National Registry for EMTs has changed the curriculum so that it's not in classroom 48 hours like it used to be. Instead, now there's a lot of blended learning. There's other methods to bring that education. We do a lot in-house already. Um, so we're providing that training as it stands. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. All set, David? Yes, sir. Mr. LeBranch. Sir. Chief. Okay, is um, having four, four additional firefighters, EMTs, having that one extra person on each of those shifts, okay, so you've got two people, you've got four shifts a day, Correct. two uptown, four shifts. two downtown, uh, two down at the beach. I'm sorry? You have four shifts you're covering, two at the station, two at the other. No, sir. So we have four groups, and each group works a 24-hour period, has a period of time off, 24-hour period, and time off. Okay. So each of those four groups will have one additional person. Okay. And as the chief, you're recommending this. I am. You're the, you're the professional. But the, I guess the question I have is that kind of goes to Brian and his friends and family and stuff. Right now, when you need extra people, you immediately tone out Correct. for off duty policemen, I mean, uh, by EMTs, to come in. This and is a joke to made about the test I took, sir. <laughs> and they come in for uh, a certain amount of time. Correct. The, the, is it four, three hours? Two again? hours. Two hours, okay. If they aren't needed, then after two hours they go back. Uh, but they're coming in and perhaps they're on overtime. Yes. Okay. And I guess the point I'm going to make is that if I was... I'm not the chief, I'm a firefighter. And I, I kind of like that over time, okay? And bringing, having another person, having four people, might actually affect my pay over a period of a year. I'm just, I mean, how do the men feel about this? Do you, can you honestly say that all your firefighters would say, are gonna be so happy to lose overtime? I, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just pointing out a perspective. Understood. Okay. That, Good that question. to me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at the big picture here. That's Do you have a sense, Chief, of how your firefighters feel about losing overtime? Well, I don't think anybody's would be happy about losing overtime pay. Okay. But I you. think that at the end of the day, that they're going to enjoy having that safety factor of another person. All set, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. One more, Mr. Ladd. If I might draw an analogy, Chief. I would consider your ambulance a 
an emergency room with tires. And if I could take the analogy a step further and say, make it a hospital emergency room, and the hospital emergency room has the same staffing it had 10 years ago, but the number of patients coming to that room has doubled or tripled. Does that not compromise the ability to appropriately provide the necessary medical care? And to me, the, the need is for the man, the saver grant is just a nice Christmas present to help pay for what is otherwise a need. And I wouldn't want to need your ambulance at my house and find out all the ambulances were in service and the ambulance from the abutting towns will take an extra number of minutes depending on time of year and traffic flows, which may affect the medical outcome. It's just too much to pay. Mr. 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 sir. You all said something? Yep. No. Mr. Moore. One final one. I'd like the question. The overtime, this might be helpful. I think that hopefully what I'm saying is positive. How much do you pay in overtime? Approximately at the end of the year. Could you ballpark it? Uh, off the top of my head, no, but I can tell you that we've overspent vacation this year, we've overspent fire callback, we've underspent... Well, we're going um, with that. Don't yeah. I can say, well, I know it's not $10, and I no. know it's not $10 million, so maybe right. somewhere in between. Right. But if you have these four people, I'm going to make this story up. You can eliminate overtime because they fill in the overtime. The amount of money you save in overtime... Callback. Pay, callback might easily, I'm making this up, pay for at least one, two, three, or maybe all four people. So we're not really paying for four new firemen because you're saving the overtime. So you're, rather than spending $400,000 over here, I'm exaggerating. I'm, with you. Yeah, I'm totally understanding. And it costs $500,000 for the four new guys, I'm exaggerating. We just save $400,000 and for, for, in, in for the, the, the differential, it's almost something we can't afford not to do. And in addition to that, sir, I would also say that if there is an ambulance transport to be performed by our own personnel, yeah. then that's revenue that we would collect. Right. So it's almost, it could wash. Could no. you maybe... I can't project that far. No. I don't know because calls vary, but... Well, could you look at last year's overtime pay? Did you have that? You Even that. still, I wouldn't be able to reference it with the additional staff because we weren't at 10. So it would be, again, it would be theorizing. And not not necessarily saying okay. Well, what if I would have been able to staff this ambulance, that ambulance? There's no there's no documentation of how many times that ambulance went out and left the captain alone to you know what I mean the cross pollination. So I would think I would think looking at their checks, they're going to have an overtime thing in their check. How much money was it? It's confusing. For firefighters, you, certainly. You, you could add I can tell you the number. Yeah, together, absolutely. And you could come up with that amount easily with right. A, the right computer. You can write the program for the checks. You can be shot. Okay, we're all set. Now, along with that, if you had that, that would help sell whatever you want to do or whatever. Explain to the to the uh, taxpayers, including me, it's not really going to cost this much money. It's really going to cost this, but it might even wash. Look, looking back at last year, and again, like I said, it, it depends on what other ambulances are, are billing for it, but we're looking at about $42,000. If it was all ALS runs last year, about $42,000 went to other communities. Right. Okay. Okay, we're all set? No. <laughs> I'm all set, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I'm I think saying everybody the is regular set, Mr. Moore. Who worked overtime, and they're not the ambulance. It's the regular five that worked overtime. You had to pay them. It's in a bucket somewhere, and we paid for it. Correct. If you could come up with fill the bucket or put into the thing of going forward how much you were actually putting into overtime per week or per month, you'd have a figure at the end of the year. So you'd have a figure to help sell us. Well, we got $400,000 last year. We paid in overtime. If we had these four people, we wouldn't have that. We would have had no overtime. I'm making that example. I understand. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Thanks, sir. You got it. You'll find it in the budget books. Um, <laughs> I think everyone is all set, correct, in terms of... I, one final thing. We do fire insurance companies do ratings on towns, right? ISO? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And... The town's fire rating has not changed in, in your memory, is that correct? It, uh, it changed, I believe I was a second year deputy, so probably about 2013, it changed to 33Y, which has a, a, a rating that used to be, there was, a, there was another uh, letter and numbering scheme, but um, ISO changed their, their mechanism and schedule for that. Um, that's based on hydrant availability, it's based on personnel, ability to apply water, uh, distance to hydrants, and number of, of um, engines, 
things like that. It's a whole complex yeah, system. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so yeah. that hasn't changed, I think, since 2013. It might be... But that's, that's revisited annually, isn't it? Uh, no, I believe it's every seven. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me, but I thought it was every seven. Because this could, could have an impact, because it's yeah. part of the formula. It, it certainly could. Yeah. And so Absolutely. it could have a positive impact Absolutely relative agree. to homeowners insurance, or, or rather property Business insurance, insurance too, in general. Sure. Property what insurance in general. Yeah. Um, but that might not actually right. take effect for seven years. We just I don't know yet. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll research that for you. Thank you. There are positive things to this. I don't want to dispute that. Uh, I'm just inclined to say, uh, well, with everything else in the picture, mm -hmm. um, I think mm, it's a tough one for me. It really is. I'm not 100% certain in my opinion on this. But I think everyone is ready to vote unless you want to delay the vote. Uh, are we ready to vote, guys? Yeah. Okay. All those who wish to recommend uh, via the LaBranch motion to recommend. Uh, okay. We have uh, everyone except... Uh, Warburton and myself, mm -hmm. and Warburton is voting. I'm voting no. And I am Six, thoroughly abstaining because I really don't. I'm on the fence. I just can't get off of it. The motion was LeBranch's uh, second by uh, uh, Vice Chairman. <laughs> and that was 6-2, right? Yes. Or rather, 6-1-1. One, one. 